everyone I'm very excited to announce that I have finally finished a project I've been working on for an extremely long time which is bringing shmup arch to the raspberry pi specifically I am bringing my newest configuration of shmup arch shmup arch 6 which is going to come out on pc next week or so too to the raspberry pi specifically the raspberry pi 4 the older versions of the raspberry pi the 3 and below I do not recommend because I do not think they bring enough power to deliver and also these settings were configured for the Raspberry Pi 4. So that is the version you need to, to buy and use to get this to work properly. And so what is Shmup Arch for those who don't know? Shmup Arch is my custom configuration of RetroArch that focuses on the Final Burn Neo Core and bringing that experience as close to the PCB arcade experience as possible. So I'm making sure the input lag is accurate. I'm making sure that the frame timing is accurate. I'm also making sure that uh, if the slowdown needs to be tweaked a little bit, that's being done. Just bringing everything as close to the arcade experience as possible. And this has required a lot of very specific testing because this is on a per game basis and also sort of an overall setting for most games. So there's a lot that has gone into Shmup Arch. I, know, I remember when I first released it about two years ago, people were just saying, oh, you're just slapping a little new name on RetroArch, but no, there's a lot of very, very in-depth specific settings, especially on the Raspberry Pi, especially, that have taken hundreds and hundreds of hours to really tweak and refine. So I think this is a much stronger experience than if you were just to throw uh, an image of you know sh RetroArch on a Raspberry Pi and play it. No, this is going to give a lot more specific stuff than that. Anyway, so let's talk about how we get started. So the first thing you need to do, of course, is you need to get a Raspberry Pi 4. Again, you cannot get older models because you need the power, so you need a Raspberry Pi 4. So here it is. That's what it looks like. And then also remember, you need to buy specific things with this uh, power supply. So there is a recommended power supply I think you can get from Adafruit and stuff like that. I'm actually personally using my Nintendo Switch power supply. I have no idea how damaging or how effective that is, but it seems to give enough power and it hasn't any negative effects so far. Also you need to make sure you buy a micro HDMI cord, which I did not realize until it arrived on my doorstep, which was annoying because then I had to order this as well, but a micro HDMI, so a regular HDMI does not work. What's cool is that it actually supports two HDMI inputs, as you can see here. So you could dual monitor if you want, I suppose, but you need at least to get a micro HDMI cord. So once you get that, the next thing you're going to do is you want to download the image file, which I'll have a link in the description. So you download the image file and then you want to use a program called Rufus to put it on an SD card. So the size of the image is about half a gig, so you could fit it on basically any SD card. But from what I understand, I'm not sure if you can boot up. Maybe they've added that in, but I haven't tested that at all. So use the SD card, at least for now. Maybe if they find a way to boot or if there's a way to boot up USB, do that. But I just use the SD card. So how you do this is uh, you download it and then under device, it should show up as your SD card under device. And then boot selector, that's where you put Shmup Arch Pi image. And then you just write it and it'll write it onto the SD card for you. So you do that and then you pop it in and power it up. And this is the screen you should see. So if you see any other sort of screen after it boots, like it's got a different background and stuff, something went wrong. So either plug it in and or like un unplug it and replug it and see if that'll kind of get it on track. Or if not, you may need to reburn it. So then after that, we need to configure inputs, which I'm doing here. So you want the fast forward, the load state, and then configure a button for the menu. Those are three importance. Then you go down and configure your regular buttons. This is to match, you know, like a, I think the Xbox 360 or to match a SNES style. So try and match those buttons up to how that would be. And then once you get the buttons configured, this step is very important. You need to go down and you need to actually restart RetroArch. The reason why is your input changes will not be saved unless you restart RetroArch. So once you do that, make sure you, uh, your USB stick is plugged in and then scan for directory. So there's your USB stick right there. Scan, scan the USB stick, just put them all on the root. 
if you want. It needs to be a FAT32 USB stick. And then when this scans, it's going to put them in the library. One thing that you'll need to keep in mind, though, is that it won't catch them all. It just won't. The scan, like you see, I got some here, but it won't catch them all. So this example of pulling up Dota on Posh, you go in, hit that, and then it's going to boot the game. There you go. Um, one thing to keep in mind, too, is you need to have the newest MAME ROM set. So the newest version of Final Burn Neo adds a lot of improvements, but you need to use the newest MAME ROM set with it. You can't use older MAME ROM sets and stuff like that. Or older Final Burn Alpha ROM sets, which was surprised me. You'll notice also here that this is in Pate mode. So I, saw, I showed there you go to Options. And then if you want to switch back and forth from Tate or Yoko, horizontal or vertical, it's the vertical mode in the option. And that'll change across all games for the final version. Okay. Not just you can close the content and when you want to launch a new game, here's two ways to do it. So there's that one way there. Another way, which I use mostly, is just loading content manually, which I'll show here. So you go to load content, then you go to start directory, and then once you go into start directory, there will be a USB stick and then you can just kind of scroll through USB stick to get the ROMs that you need. So the, and then always choose Final Burn Neo when it asks what core, always Final Burn Neo. And so now we're going to open up, but then there might be some extra lag from your display. So this is four frames. It's a little bit more responsive than the PS4 port, which is really good. It actually matches the Saturn port, but since it's on the Raspberry Pi and it doesn't have free sync support and stuff like that. It's more along the lines of the PS4 port, but still, that's basically PCB levels of response, maybe even a little bit faster than the actual PCB. Another thing I wanted to show is if you want to get in and put things on the SD card, like you want to put ROMs on the SD card or something like that, there's a feature called Samba. So you, you activate Samba. And then what you do is you go up to Wi-Fi. I'm not going to show it here, but you go to Wi-Fi and you connect your Wi-Fi. And then on your computer, if you do the the forward slashes, Laka, L-A-K-K-A, -A, just in a like a file, you know, navigation, forward slashes, two forward slashes, L-A-K-K-A, -A, and then hit enter. You can then access the file system and put ROMs on there and stuff if you want. But what I recommend doing for ROMs is just putting them on a USB stick, just on the root of a USB stick. That's going to save you a lot of headache. And so I'm just showing here. Again, so if you're using an old ROM set for like DOJs specifically, I know, old ROM sets don't work. You need to have that new main ROM set to get DOJ running specifically. But look at this. This is running at arcade levels of input lag. I tried to get the auto configs to work. Just that they were being extremely stubborn, unfortunately. So yeah, that's basically everything. That's how you get it set up. That's what it looks like when it's running. I highly recommend it. This is basically like having a shmup console now. And I think it's really accessible. And I definitely encourage you all to check it out. And so you all enjoy.